On October 30, 2025, the world was quietly altered by an object no one was supposed to notice. Its name was 3I Atlas, the third known interstellar visitor to pass through our solar system. But this time, something was different. Whatever it was, it didn't behave like any comet, asteroid, or fragment of cosmic ice we've ever recorded. It was deliberate, controlled, watching. At first, it was just a conversation, a few scientists debating its strange course, a handful of astronomers whispering about its acceleration that didn't quite fit gravity's laws. Even high-profile voices began taking notice. Theories spread quickly. What started as chatter about a simple comet had become something much bigger, something that made even NASA uneasy. Reports surfaced that 3I Atlas was made almost entirely of nickel, an industrial alloy rarely found in natural form. That alone defied explanation. And then came the data that changed everything. The first detection of non-gravitational acceleration. Something was pushing it, something other than gravity. If that's true, then we're not watching a rock. We're watching a craft. The discovery began quietly in the early hours of a routine sky survey over Hawaii. At 2.43 universal time, a faint object slipped into the Atlas telescope's nightly feed. Its motion didn't fit any known orbital path. The system flagged it automatically. TLS 2025R2. The algorithm stopped. The numbers didn't make sense. Its velocity was too high, its vector too steep, and the residual error too perfect to dismiss as noise. Within minutes, the system labeled it unbound, meaning it wasn't captured by the sun's gravity at all. It was simply passing through. By dawn, confirmation poured in from telescopes in Chile, Japan, and Europe. The trail was faint but unmistakable, an object moving 30 kilometers per second, faster than anything born of this system. The Minor Planet Center distributed the internal bulletin quietly. No photos, no press release, just coordinates and data, our solar system had been visited again. What makes this story unnerving is how invisible it almost remained. While the world scrolled and slept, the third interstellar object in human history crossed our neighborhood and almost nobody noticed. Observatories scrambled to gather light before it vanished into the sun's glare. Each exposure was worth gold, a few seconds of faint streaks captured between clouds. And when the frames were stacked together, something emerged. Not chaos, not debris, but rhythm. A pulse in brightness that rose and fell with uncanny precision as if the object was rotating perfectly on a stable axis. Natural objects tumble. They spin unpredictably. 3I Atlas didn't. It was steady, balanced, engineered. Soon, larger telescopes took over Hubble, Gemini North, the European arrays, and what they found deepened the mystery. The object showed no signs of outgassing. No jets of vapor, no dust. Its surface reflected light like metal polished to dull perfection. Spectral analysis returned nothing. No water, no carbon dioxide, no organic residue, just silence. It was as if 3I Atlas refused to reveal what it was made of. By the end of the week, one thing became undeniable. Its motion didn't obey gravity alone. A persistent radial deviation appeared in every model, identical to the anomalies once seen with Aumuamua. But this time, stronger, clearer, impossible to ignore. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory issued a measured statement, calling it a valuable opportunity to refine our models of interstellar debris. The European Space Agency echoed the sentiment, but the emails behind the scenes told a different story. Teams at Harvard, JPL, and the European Space Operations Center quietly admitted they couldn't explain what they were seeing. The numbers didn't lie. The force acting on 3I Atlas was real, but its source was invisible. By mid-October, revision after revision filled the databases. Every new solution made the math worse. The more accurate the numbers became, the less sense the orbit made. The object's path bent ever so slightly, always in the same direction like something was guiding it. Engineers tried to blame radiation pressure, instrument error, or thermal recoil, but none of it fit. Whatever 3I Atlas was, it was following geometry, not behavior. Then came the first signal. Just after the initial detection, radio telescopes in Canada and Chile caught narrowband pulses from the same region of sky. They weren't random bursts. They repeated in binary intervals, rhythmic, precise, structured. The frequency sat near 1.42 GHz. The hydrogen line, 
the very range SETI uses to search for intelligent communication. To rule out interference, observatories cross-check data from separate continents. The pattern matched perfectly. NASA dismissed it publicly as instrumental noise. But hours later, they issued an internal data protection notice, an automatic protocol used only during events deemed sensitive to national security or planetary defense. The raw data vanished behind restricted access. University archives were locked. Amateur astronomers who had recorded fragments of the signal were told their observations were under review. Then, silence. Meanwhile, independent stations kept listening. For days, the pattern returned weaker each time until it faded completely. But one strange coincidence persisted. Every transmission occurred while 3I Atlas was aligned with Earth's orbital plane, as if it were waiting to be heard. By the time the Hubble Space Telescope re-imaged the object, it had already begun to drift beyond the sun. The light curve remained constant, smooth, deliberate, almost artificial. Its shape no longer matched any model of natural debris. Instead of tumbling randomly, it spun with mathematical perfection, completing rotations at exact intervals down to the second. Inside NASA and ESA, the conversation shifted from what is it to what do we do about it? Half the community argued for contact to send a reply on the same narrowband frequency, encoded in prime numbers. The other half warned against it. If 3i Atlas was indeed transmitting, that meant it was already listening. And if it was listening, it already knew we were here. When CASIS, the trace gas orbiter's imaging system around Mars, captured it weeks later, the data showed something breathtaking, a metallic object, symmetrical with a reflective leading edge and a smooth, curved body that defied the randomness of nature. Hubble confirmed the pattern days later. The same rhythm, the same precise flicker of light. At this point, the evidence could no longer be dismissed as coincidence. 3 I Atlas wasn't behaving like a comet. It was navigating. Revision after revision from the minor planet center struggled to keep up. Every recalculation moved the path closer to the inner planets. Earth's orbit became the next point of intersection. Each update carried the same quiet phrase, orbit solution refined. But within NASA, that sentence meant something else. We have no idea what this is. And then, almost as suddenly as it appeared, the data began to fade. Telescopes required longer exposures just to find the faint streak of light. The signal-to-noise ratio dropped. Each photon felt borrowed, as if the universe itself was erasing the trail. The object still followed its predicted course, still reflected sunlight cleanly, but it was leaving. Before it disappeared completely, one final anomaly was logged. A brief, rhythmic pulse from deep space, perfectly timed with its outbound trajectory. The last transmission lasted 17 seconds. Its pattern matched hydrogen frequency intervals, the same band used in every SETI experiment since 1960. And then nothing. 3i Atlas faded into the darkness beyond Mars, leaving behind only data incomplete, contested, and terrifying. If it was natural, then physics is lying to us. If it was artificial, then someone or something sent it here. And maybe, after millions of years of silence, the message has already been received. So ask yourself, if 3i Atlas was indeed sent by another civilization, what happens now that we've finally noticed? Because maybe, just maybe, it's still listening.